In this video, I'm going to take a simple progression that you already know, like this one. And then I'm going to use some fairly basic functional harmony and show you how you can turn it into this. Or this. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. There are many ways that you can reharmonize a progression, but in this video, I'm just gonna take a really basic 251 and also use some fairly basic functional harmony to really show you how much you can do. And it's all about how you understand the progression because that's gonna give you a lot of options. And since we're using a really basic progression, then this is something that you can easily take to other songs and other progressions and use in your own music or your own arrangements. So the basic thing that we're working with here is just a 251 in the key of C major like this. So the main thing that you want to think about with this progression is that you want to see the three different chords as belonging to three different groups within the tonality. So you want to think about the D minor 7 as being a subdominant chord, the G7 as a dominant chord, and the C major 7 as a tonic chord. Thinking of the chords in groups is actually a huge advantage because that also means that we have different chords that will belong to the same group and we can use those instead of what is there. If you compare this to a sentence where each chord is a word in that sentence, then this is about understanding the meaning of the word and then finding synonyms so that you have different words that you can use instead. And some of them will just have a slightly different emphasis or a slightly different meaning. And you might wanna use that to get your sentence to sound better or get a certain thing across. So when we think about the chords in groups like this, then we immediately get access to a lot of different options and a lot of different chords that we can use instead of what is already there. And since we can do this for all the chords, then we are pretty free to change the complete sound of the progression as you saw in the intro to the video. One thing that's really important once you start reharmonizing progressions is that you don't only think about, oh, I'm playing this chord instead of this chord and everything that happens around it doesn't matter. You really wanna think about your chord progressions as musical statements. You wanna try to have nice sounding baseline melodies and chords that really fit together. And you can only do this if you think about the chord progression as a longer set of chords and how they sound together. Let's first have a look at what we have available for the subdominant chords. This is the largest group of chords. I'm going to split them up in three different groups. And if we start with the most basic set, then that would be the ones that are found within the key. So if we look at C major, then the ones we have would have be a D minor seven an F major seven, and also sometimes an A minor seven. I guess I can better talk about this before we have too many heated discussions in the comments, because it is actually possible for a chord to have different functions. I say this all the time, in music, context is everything. And before you get all angry and uh, say that it's impossible for an A minor seven to be a subdominant chord, try and go and analyze bar five of polka dots and moonbeams, where you really have a six chord functioning as a subdominant chord. This is again about context. In some contexts, you can actually have the six degree work as a subdominant chord, even though most of the time it will be a tonic chord. The next group of chords is something that really defines jazz harmony, I think, especially when it comes to jazz standards. And those are the minor subdominant chords. So if you've ever played any Cole Porter songs, well, actually any jazz standard, then you've come across chords that are borrowed from the minor key, also sometimes called modal interchange. And in this case, we can borrow a few different types of chords from the minor key. And uh, for C minor, then the basic chords we have available would be the D half diminished chord, the F minor seven, and then also the flat six, the A flat major seven, and the backdoor dominant, so the B flat seven. Some other really useful chords that you'll come across quite often would be the F minor six, and the F minor major. And finally, one that's a little bit less common, but really great to work with, and also just a great sound, is the Neapolitan subdominant, the D flat major seven. So in this video, I'm not really explaining what they are in detail. I have other videos on modal interchange and borrowing chords, 
and I'm linking to a playlist if you want to dig into that. Here I just want to give you some options and you can check out the theory in other videos. The last group of subdominant chords is the sharp four subdominant chords and this is a group that's a little bit overlooked which is a pity because it sounds really great. It's actually also fairly common but most of the time when people come across them in analysis then they're going out of their way to call them something else and usually make them into secondary dominant which I think really is a pity. It's a great sound and you definitely want to have it in your vocabulary. I'm not sure what the proper term is for this group so I'm calling them sharp four subdominants or you could maybe call them raised subdominants, I don't know. Maybe leave a comment if you have a good suggestion. You can also leave a comment if you want to complain about how this video is not about Eric Clapton and how great he is even though he doesn't use any sharp four subdominants. Some of the options you have for this group of subdominant chords would be the F sharp half diminished, so really just a sharp four half diminished. Also the diminished version, so an F sharp diminished chord. And this is sometimes reharmonized to a dominant, so you will have a B7. And another one that's very common, that actually is just an inversion, but I want to mention it because you see it very often, is an E flat diminished chord in the key of C major. Already with this material, where we're only changing the two chord, the D minor seven, you can get a lot of really great sounds, especially if you're using the minor subdominance. An example of that could be using the flat six or the A flat major seven, that sounds like this. And another sound that's a little bit more distinct would be to use an F minor major like this. And since we're just working with the progression and it doesn't have to be sort of I'm changing this chord to this chord, you can also use several chords. So in this example I'm using first a sharp four, so an F sharp half diminished, then an F minor and then I go to G7. Let's have a look at what's available for the dominant function. The dominant function is a group of chords with the most clear pull towards resolving back to the tonic, where the subdominant is a little bit more vague and can actually resolve back to the tonic, but can also move on to the dominant, then the dominant function is really clear and that makes it a little bit boring and we have a little bit fewer options. But we still have some useful ones to check out. So from the basic major scale, we have of course the dominant chord, so the G7 in this case the B half diminished. Similar to what we could do with the minor subdominance, we can also borrow a dominant from the minor key. So we have a G7 flat 13 flat 9, in this case I'm just playing a G7 flat 13. And another one that's also really useful to know is the tritone substitution. So for the G7, the tritone away from G is D flat and we have a D flat 7. And using some of these options together with some of the things that we already found for the subdominant, you get an example like this. So this first example is really just using a minor cadence and then resolving back to major, which is a really great sort of surprising sound because you expect when you hear it that you're gonna resolve to a minor chord. Another one that's using the tritone sounds like this. Here the combination is using a borrowed chord from minor, so a flat six, and then putting that together with a tritone substitution. And that's simply because then you get a really logical bass movement and it sounds like a really strong progression, but you can probably already hear that yourself. Let's check out what we have available with tonic chords and then also add another trick or another way to change the progression. Instead of changing the tonic chord, then we can just recognize that the point of the progression is to build some tension and then resolve that when we get to the tonic chord. And if that's really sort of the point of gravity of the whole progression, then we can use that by suspending that tonic chord. So instead of playing the tonic chord, we can play something else and in that way, just sort of prolong the tension and surprise the listener. And there are two really common ways to do this using either a sharp four subdominant or a minor subdominant. And here are two examples that do that. So this first example is first using an F major seven as a subdominant chord. Then the tritone substitution of the G seven, so a D flat seven. And then instead of resolving to the C major seven directly, I go to an F sharp diminished chord with a C in the bass and then resolve that to the C major 7.
This example is also starting with an F major 7 as a subdominant chord. Then just a basic G7. And then instead of resolving to C major, I first go to a minor subdominant, namely an A flat major 7. And then I resolve to C. The final technique that I'm going to cover in this video is almost like a bonus feature because you already have all these different options for all of the different chords, but you don't actually have to follow the structure of the original progression when you're making up new chord progressions. So you don't have to stick to subdominant, dominant, resolving to tonic. You can change this around. And the two examples that I went over in the beginning, in the intro of this video, are actually using this and they're using two of the most common versions of this. So the first one is using another subdominant chord, so an F major 7 instead of a D minor 7. Then it moves to a minor subdominant, which is the A flat major 7. And then from there it suspends the tonic with a D flat major 7, that's another minor subdominant. And then from there it resolves to C major 7. So the basic structure that's used here is subdominant to a minor subdominant, and then we are suspending the resolution to the tonic with another minor subdominant, and then finally resolving. The even more mysterious example from the intro where it looks like I'm replacing a G7 with a B7 is using first a subdominant chord, so that's the D minor seven, and then it's using a raised subdominant, so a sharp four, and in this case, of course, a sharp four would be some sort of F sharp diminished, and a common substitute for that would be a B7 chord, so that's what I'm using here, and then I'm resolving back to the tonic to C major seven. If you like the way that I'm using functional harmony in this video to reharmonize the 251, then I think you want to dig into how you can actually use this as a really powerful tool, not only for reharmonizations, but also for really understanding songs and chord progressions and actually help you create better solos by telling you what to aim for, how to play lines and how to make them really strong. If you want to check that out, then check out this playlist where I have a few different videos where I'm using this in different ways for reharmonization, but also for song analysis and also for simplifying chord progressions.